Good morning children this is Aisha and I'm going to take up physics and chemistry classes as part of this homeschooling hope you're enjoying this different type of learning experience by staying indoors and learning through different modules given by our teachers so let us start for today the first chapter of chemistry that is materials metals and non-metals so in order to learn more about metals and non-metals you should have an idea a clear idea about what is matter so matter is anything that has mass and occupies some space also its presence should be felt by our senses that is matter is anything that has mass and occupies space and should be perceived by our senses. We all know that everything which is around us is composed of matter like this pencil, paper, plank, stones, trees, all this is made up of matter. So here, now what is this matter made up of? So what is this matter composed of? Matter is composed of simplest particle that is atoms. So atoms are the building blocks of matter I can say. In fact they are the smallest particles of matter which cannot be divided further by any physical means. They are the basic units from which molecules are made. So matter can be present in different forms like it can be present as elements in the nature or compounds or mixtures. So if you talk about elements and compounds they are the purest forms of matter whereas mixtures are not the pure forms but are the impure form of matter. We will be learning about the compounds and mixtures separately in higher classes in detail. But for now, let us concentrate on elements. So, what are elements children? These are the purest forms of matter which consists of same kind of atoms. Same kind of atoms. What do you mean by same kind of atoms? There are different types of atoms and in elements same kind of atoms are present. I will give you an example of hydrogen for example. Hydrogen element consists of two atoms of hydrogen. It consists of two atoms of hydrogen. So two atoms of hydrogen together constitute one molecule of hydrogen that is nothing but element can you see any other type of atoms here it is only hydrogen atoms that are present over here if you talk about water what is the chemical formula of water it is h2o so here it is composed of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen so you can see different atoms are present in the compound water but here you can see that same kind of atoms are present in an element so same is the case with n2 s8 s8 is a sulfur molecule which consists of eight atoms of sulfur you won't find any other kind of atoms in this that is why they are called as pure substances or pure forms of matter. There is a scientist by name Lavoisier. He classified elements as metals, metalloids and non-metals. Let us talk about metals, examples of metals. You have some examples like copper, sodium, aluminium, potassium, gold, iron. All these are metals. Coming to non-metals, we have hydrogen, oxygen, chlorine, bromine, nitrogen, sulfur, etc. 
Now what are these metalloids? Metalloids are the substances which have properties of both metals and non-metals. So they are like intermediary forms which have the properties of both metals and non-metals. So how can you know actually uh, which one is a metal and which one is a non-metal? So based on some physical and chemical properties, we can distinguish between metals and non-metals. In today's class, we will be learning about the physical properties which differentiate a metal from a non-metal. So there are about 118 elements discovered so far and out of that 92 are naturally occurring and among these 92 elements 70 are metal and approximately 22 are non-metals. So let us just see how we can differentiate between a metal and a non-metal. Let us consider some physical properties which I have listed over here and see how metals are different from non-metals. So about 118 elements have been discovered so far children and out of that 92 are naturally occurring. And out of those 92 nat naturally occurring elements, 70 are metals and the rest are non-metals. So here is the table giving you some idea about the various physical properties and how they differ in metals and non-metals. Coming first to the physical state of matter, metals are usually solids. In order to understand these physical and chemical properties more, you need to just imagine or keep in mind uh, some metal that you are very familiar with like uh, which you know like iron or gold or silver anything and then compare these physical properties so it's going to be easy when you imagine the things more okay now physical state as you know that metals are solids but usually solids but there's an exception there's an exception mercury mercury is a metal which exists in liquid state in the room temperature same is the case with gall gallium and cesium these change to liquid once you handle them that means their melting point mel melting uh, points are very so low that they just change or get converted into liquids once you handle them so these are the exceptions coming to non metals they are generally solids and gases you can see solids uh, phosphorus and iodine are the examples of solid non metals gases you know that they are hydrogen oxygen nitrogen helium even all these are non metals which are gaseous in nature coming to liquid state there is only one non metal which is which exists as liquid at room temperature and that is bromine hardness the next property that we will be considering is hardness so we know that metals are very hard but there is one exception again metals like sodium and potassium sodium and potassium are so soft that they can be cut with the help of a knife coming to non metals they are very soft or brittle phosphorus if you take iodine phosphorus they are also brittle that means they are very soft but there is an exception again diamond which we all know that is the hardest substance on earth Coming to luster, what do you mean by luster children? It is nothing but a shine, a property of uh, which gives a particular shine, a characteristic shine to a substance. We know that all metals are very lustrous. Can you see this? Lust can, you know that in the gold or silver they have got some special or, spe or uh, significant luster. So they are very lustrous or shiny. 
exceptions are sodium and potassium but they also are lustrous but they are always covered with a dull layer with a, with a dull layer because they are very reactive elements they react with atmospheric gases and form oxides or carbonate layers on top of them that's why they appear little dull coming to non metals you can see that they are always very dull uh, or non lustrous the exceptions are diamond that has got exceptional uh, lustrous property graphite graphite also has a nice uh, shine and iodine crystals also are very lustrous coming to sonority what do you mean by sonority now it's another physical property uh, which produces i mean these substances produce a ringing sound so that property of producing a ringing sound when they are banged or hit it's called as sonority so we know that metals when you drop a plate what happens it produces lot of sound so they are very sonorous in nature coming to non metals they are non sonorous they are they don't produce ringing sounds conduction of heat is the next property so we know that all metals are very good conductors of heat and electricity isn't it so that is the reason why we use them for making the cooking utensils so the basic vessel is made up of a good conductor of heat like for example aluminium or copper based vessels steel isn't it whereas non metals are non conductors of heat we know that the the cooking vessels the handles of the cooking vessels are usually made of this non conductors like bakelite or wood or plastic so they are non conductors of heat but exception is diamond and graphite also even diamond is a good conductor of heat coming to conduction of electricity we know that metals are very good conductors of electricity they allow they allow electric current to flow through them very easily so silver is one of the good conductors of electricity it's the best conductor of electricity whereas non metals again are non conductors of electricity they do not allow electricity or heat to flow through them examples glass or plastic or wood but there is an exception here also which is nothing but graphite so graphite is a is the own is the non metal which conducts electricity coming to one new property actually malleability that you have not learned in a, in your lower classes malleability so malleability is the property please listen very carefully children malleability is the property by which the substances or the metals can be drawn into thin sheets can be beaten into very thin sheets so we know that if you uh, hit um, a metal by using a hammer then what happens does it break the metals don't break so instead of breaking they just become flatter and flatter and they become into thin sheets so one good example i'll be giving is nothing but you know example is gold or aluminum have you not seen aluminum foils children they are nothing but sheets of aluminum also uh, the uh, some sweets will be decorated with very very fine and thin foil so with oh, it's possible only with metals so metals are malleable that means they can be beaten into thin sheets but what will happen if you uh, hit a chalk piece with a hammer what happens it will just become powder into powder into a powder so they are non metal they are brittle the non the non metals are non malleable that means they are if you hit them with a hammer they break into pieces they are so brittle coming to ductility coming to ductility 
it is the property by which they can be drawn into thin wires metals can be made into thin wires and that property is called as ductility so as you know that the copper wires which are used for um, electric uh, electrical connections or equipments you know that is mainly used um, made of copper so copper can be made into thin wires same is the case with gold or silver so they can be made into thin wires but non metals cannot be made into thin wires exception is optical fibers optic fibers i'm sorry optic fibers that are made from carbon now melting and boiling points so what is a melting point children it is the temperature at which a solid solid gets converted into liquid at atmospheric pressure what is boiling point it is the temperature at which a liquid changes into vapor state or gaseous state uh, at atmospheric pressure these both are the actually temperatures at which the physical state is changing metals have very high melting points and boiling points whereas non metals have very low melting points or boiling points so there's an exception here again that is graphite and diamond both have very high melting points and boiling points coming to density it is nothing but defined as mass per unit volume the amount of mass that is contained in a unit volume so it's very clear that metals have very high density because the molecules are very tightly packed isn't it and um, and they've got uh, very high density so non metals have very low density when compared to metals the non metals have low density in my next module i shall be explaining about the chemical properties of metals and non metals today you learnt about the physical properties of metals and non metals tomorrow i shall be giving you an explanation regarding the chemical properties of metals and non metals after watching this video please answer uh, to the questions which i am going to post in the group thank you children